premiered on December 21st, 1937, with a general release on February 4th, 1938. It became the highest grossing sound film of all time, nominated for an Oscar for Best Musical Score, and winning an honorary Oscar the following year. It was Disney's first full-length animated movie, as well as one of the first full-length animated movies, period. It first hit home video in 1994, and for the purpose of this podcast, we watched the 2009 Diamond Edition Blu-ray. Hi, I'm Justin, and across from me is Stella, and this is the discussion on Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Welcome to the first podcast, and this is how it begins. You have so much energy. I What? I do? Yeah. I did at the beginning. I just, I don't know, how do you continue it after that? You don't script the whole podcast, and I, much kudos to those who do. <laughs> I'm just saying, I can't reach your level. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. So, this is the first thing that Disney produced full length, feature length wise, ever. Before then, he produced a bunch of shorts like Steamboat Willie. Everything that came after that, the skeleton dance sequence, which is one of my favorites. Uh, We also got The Three Little Pigs, which was nominated for an Oscar. And he did the sequel to that, and he said, you just can't do a sequel to Pigs. You can't top Pigs with Pigs. That's apparently what he famously said. (laughs) And now Disney's like ridden with sequels beyond their animation studio. We just saw Maleficent 2, so... Yeah, but that was not anime. It yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't anime either. Animated. <laughs> yeah, but that's what I mean. Like, I wonder what he would kind of think today with all the sequels that come out as far as, like, Marvel sequels, Star Wars sequels, which, I mean, it's all Disney stuff. But even today, we get sequels in theaters to Disney animated movies, including Frozen 2. For many years, they were doing direct-to-video stuff, but one of the things that have pretty much gone untouched the last, man, I want to say it's been 80 uh, 80 years since the original first Disney Animated Studios film came out, and there hasn't really been any sequels, they haven't really done any continuations, the characters have shown up on House of Mouse, that's about it, it's kind (laughs) of weird. Um, The movie hit VHS in 1994, I'd like to know. How did you first watch Snow White and the Seven Doors? No idea. It was probably like three, two, dressed up as Snow White. For you did dress up as Snow White. <laughs> preschool, Halloween. Do you have a picture of that? Yeah. Was it the actual Somewhere. outfit like that she wears in the movie? Yeah. Was what it? Do you, what do you mean the actual one? Was it like with the little poofs, the yep. per, like the blue poofs and the yellow bottom and everything? Yep. So it wasn't like homemade or anything? You actually found like the costume? I'm asking if you personally went to the store and bought this, I guess, at three years or four years old. Probably. <laughs> I could see your mom doing that anyway, making sure it's like the pristine, correct dress anyway. I didn't have a say in it. I didn't want to be her. What'd you want to be? I, I don't remember, but... You know you didn't want to be Snow White. I wasn't a fan of the dress, and I'm pretty sure my mom did my hair like that, and... Like the classic 30s little I probably wanted to be Belle. Yeah, that's true. Um, I could see that. (laughs) I just want to imagine yourself being ticked off that you're being Snow White. But no one really likes Snow White. No one really wants to be Snow White. She's very bland. (laughs) Wonder Bread. Looks like Wonder Bread. (laughs) How'd you see it? I first saw it probably on VHS, obviously. I mean, at my house. And do you want the Blue specific way. details of the year? <laughs> I only saw it for today's Date episode. And time. Uh, I just saw it today. No, um, I saw it probably when we got it on VHS, which I was born in '95, and I know the VHS hit in '94. And my mom would buy these like pretty like day of. She would tell me that she bought all the VHSs uh, for like twenty five bucks each, which is pretty crazy. 
when you your mom yeah well for her for starters because she doesn't like she's a big bargain hunter but disney stuff doesn't really get cheap and we had quite a few tapes and i was like how did you get these she's like i i just paid full price i was like jeez and they're worth like nothing now <laughs> it's Good just thing my mom has two copies of cinderella and one's still in the package you definitely have a larger collection of Disney VHSs than what we ever had. We had like uh, we had the Fox and the Hound, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, and Snow White, which I feel like every household had. But we never got things like I don't think we ever had a copy of Robin Hood, which seemed to be like one that was in every house. But you know, Snow White was probably one of the more popular Disney VHSs because it was like one of the last the hit VHS. They were really holding back on it because they didn't want to release these on VHS. They were worried it was going to affect their re-releases in the future for theatrical runs. And Snow White was re-released in theaters pretty much every single decade after it came out. So the idea of putting it on VHS was kind of crazy. They were worried about it. But it proved to be more profitable than to even put them in theaters. And I don't think it ever was widely released in theaters ever again after... The 1993 re-release. So I didn't ever see it in theaters. Isn't that sad? No, neither did you. And we may never see it in theaters. Nope. It'll be on Disney Plus, so, you know, you can... It'll be a click away. Or you could watch one of the two Blu-rays I have. (laughs) It's close enough to theaters. Yeah. It's better than theaters. You know, kids running around. Because, you know, kids would be going to see Snow White in the re-release in theaters. (laughs) Um, What are your uh, general thoughts of this movie? As far as, I guess, a movie today. Don't think of it as a cultural touchstone. Think of it outside of the historical value. What do you think of this movie? Yeah, I don't think you can think of it like that. (laughs) (laughs) Why not? Is it not good enough? No, but that's how you think of it. You do. I feel like you have to like it. Think of it this way, though. So, Wizard of Oz basically got produced got the funding because this movie is popular and MGM said, make Wizard of Oz right now. And you love the Wizard of Oz, as do I. We have Mm -hmm. seen it multiple times in theaters. And that was released around the same time. I like that movie beyond the historical value. Very much so. So, kind of compare it to that. Well, it was the first time I've seen it in years, so that says anything. Not Uh, one that you go back to. Not as much. Is other Disney princess movies. But, I don't know. I like it. It's cute. And it's short. It is really short. One of the things I guess I really appreciate about the movie is how it ends. Because it doesn't... We don't linger. We don't have a big dance number. We don't have to have a big conversation between the main characters. Which I also guess could be a negative about the zero development the relationship gets. But I like that when she wakes up there's very few lines i was claiming there were no lines <laughs> once <Wrong. laughs> but i was wrong there she there's does she's they, the prince sings and also snow white says to multiple dwarves goodbye goodbye <laughs> so i was like i feel like an idiot now <laughs> yep. um but they just kind of ride away into the castle that's in the clouds kind of yeah. heavenly it makes me sad she just leaves the dwarves you feel bad for the dwarves yeah. it's true they they sat there for quite a few months like like you said, I was like, they went, it's like, man, there's months have passed, like seasons have passed. <laughs> and well. I was like, geez. But yeah, she does just kind of ditch him because, you know, she found her real man. And I was like, that's kind of sad. she has never talked to. She ran away from. He's like, yeah, but he's about my height. So that's what I want to go for, I guess. Which, Is that what you look for? I mean, why wouldn't she stick around with the dwarves? You got seven eligible bachelors right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um... But like I said, I like how it ends. And I've always loved that little ending shot. I think it's really pretty, even though I'm like, it kind of looks like heaven. Are we sure she just didn't die and this is like the dream sequence? There's never a sequel. So. Well, maybe. F- film theory. Maybe you're right. <laughs> um, you know, outside of historical value and the fact that this is the first to do it and pretty much kickstarted the whole Disney thing. This movie funded the studio, by the way. They, like, built a brand new studio after this. This funded a bunch of crap. This was... This movie making so much money was pretty much why Pinocchio, Fantasia, and Bambi could flop because this movie made that much money. I actually still think it's a really good movie. I'm surprised, actually. I, I like it more than I did when I was a kid. 
When I was a kid, I thought it was kind of boring. And scary. And yeah, yeah, we. I think we both said that like while watching it. We're like, <laughs> that was our one description of it. Boring and scary. Mm-hmm. Um, this movie still has the freakiest imagery of any of the animated movies. Um, with the trees that come to life in a way almost. With the witch who is very spooky in herself. Especially the transformation scene. Um, all those eyes just coming out of the darkness. Huntsman trying to kill her. It's just, it is, it's got a kind of a creepy tone. And there's something about, like, older animation that always does kind of freak me out. I always get kind of this weird fourth wall kind of vibe to it. Like, ugh, it it just makes me think those paintings and what if they're just, like, around still and they're sitting in, like, a dusty room and there's, like, spiders (laughs) crawling all. I just think of stuff like that and I'm like, oh, it just makes me, makes me think of, like, walking through an old musty house and, like, uh, I feel like something is alive in here. (laughs) And something won't die. As something's like moving around in the background, something just fell, so that freaked me out even more. <laughs> but that, that heart is racing right now. Yeah, that freaked me out. <laughs> but when the movie's not doing that, I always thought the rest of it's boring. And it might be because so much of it has been done in the past. Well, not, not well now in the past, but after this movie came out, Disney basically took a bunch of stuff from it. And used it in so many mo- their movies. It became like the archetype for their typical princess story. You Sleeping were, Beauty. yeah, you were making the comparisons of Sleeping Beauty, and it's like, well, but you were asking me, you were like, well, which one's better, and what did you say? This one. You thought this one was better. Yeah. Why? Why do you look like confused? Because I'm asking you to go into detail. Uh, because Sleeping Beauty never talks, and the prince never talks. It's just more boring yeah no that's a good point i don't really remember much about sleeping beauty but this and snow white both kind of were in the category of movies i don't remember much about same with cinderella um i don't remember any songs from sleeping beauty either yeah except for like the the very ending song i guess but even then that's not like a Yep. See, I know it. I was thinking of the Lana Del Rey version from the 2014 Maleficent <laughs> movie. That's a scary version. I don't like it. I, I kind of dig it, but it's more in like a I want to die kind of way. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Maybe I, I just didn't like the d- princess movies when I was a Excuse younger. Me. When I was a boy, think about it. It's all part of that. I'm a boy, so I don't enjoy this as okay. much. Well... Let me ask you, a woman, did you enjoy uh, Cinderella as much? Did you like Cinderella more than these two? Those three, I've seen, like, the least out of all Disney movies, so you keep asking. (laughs) Right, but also, if you think about it, those are also... The the oldest. They're the oldest ones, and they're also... Yeah, so that might be part of it. Maybe they just don't attach to you as much because they're too old. I just feel like those, all three, well, Cinderella mostly has the most personality, but these two just... They're kind of boring princesses. In a way. And it's funny because, like, I I could almost always tell that this movie was older. Kind of like a black and white film. You could tell is older. When I was a kid, I could still tell that this movie was older, along with Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty. And I don't really know what it is. Because, like, then... The sound. I, well, that's part of it, I guess. But, like, when you're watching it on a VHS tape, especially, I feel like they all kind of... You can't tell. You shouldn't be able to tell as much. But yet I was able to, because then I would pop in, like, Oliver and Company, and I would know that that movie's not old. Not a princess movie. And maybe because Oliver and Company takes place in the city, but then, you know, I'd pop in Aladdin, and I'd know for sure that's newer, but maybe because of Robin Williams. But I, it's just weird that you could definitely still tell that these movies were older, and there was something, you just get a vibe when you're younger from older movies that you're like, I don't want to watch this right now. And I don't know what the science is behind that. There has to be something... But You're I'm not ju- wrong. Because kids always want the newer thing. And that's why, like, the direct-to-video sequels in the early 2000s did so well. Because kids just wanted the new thing. If they would have actually made that Snow White either sequel or prequel that they were trying to make with, like, Dopey, I feel like, you know, kids probably would have maybe knew about it more. And then, like, maybe grabbed the old movie, watched it more. This movie does, at times, for children anyway, feel like an obligation. 
Like, we have to watch it because it's got so much cultural value behind it. But it was so well known back in the 90s because there was still that re-release. There hasn't been a re-release since then. So I kind of wonder if you'd go up to a kid today and be like, hey, Snow White, if they would, like, know. Probably not. Which is weird because they still have Blu-ray releases. Disney still treats it like an enduring classic, and it is. Kids only see Frozen now. Yeah, but they still, I'm sure there's still kids who see Lion King, see Beauty and the Beast, and I'm sure because their parents grew up with it, but, you know, once you get into, like, stuff pre-90s, stuff that the parents only grew up through VHS, I kind of wonder how those ones hold up. I know, but Frozen's like the new Snow White. That's a good point. So they just kind of care about the new thing. (laughs) I always would watch Snow White, because I remember at one point we were trying to go through all the movies in release order. We were a bit older, but so we were able to figure that out. Um, this was very pre-internet days, but I was able to figure out that there was many Disney movies that were released, and that they were all released in order of like date. So we would try to watch them all in order of release of what we owned, and we'd start out with Snow White. And even during that watch, I don't. Re- I remember specifically doing that, but I don't remember watching at that time. So it's like, it never really attached to me too much. I don't know why. Have you ever seen any of the, uh, the Silly Symphonies that Walt Disney produced before he did Snow White? So I'm talking about stuff like all the Mickey Mouse shorts, the Three Little Pig shorts. Have you ever seen anything like that? I'm sure you have. Yeah, probably. From like the sing-along tapes anyway. But there's like a style to those where it's like about eight minutes long. It would feature really wide-eyed characters and scenarios of repetitive structure of jokes. And there's a lot of that in Snow White. And Snow White to me is kind of comprised of one simple story involving Snow White and the Queen trying to kill her. And then you have this other plot going on with the dwarves kind of going through their own silly symphony segments. Little dance numbers, musical moments. Because if you watch his short films, it's like it's kind of like watching a couple of those put into a larger story. And that's like the only reason to me that this movie kind of feels structurally weird. Because it's just almost like it's being forced to be a feature-length film. Because he wanted to prove to everyone he could do it. I don't have anything to add because I, I have never seen those. You probably, never, but I don't You've remember. seen them probably in the sing-along format uh, on the VHS tapes. Like the sing-along tapes. Yeah, but that's just like a short piece of it. It's not the whole right. thing. Right. So it's almost like that tape is doing what this movie did, <laughs> which was take like little segments and put it together. Because we even put on like the, the Blu-ray itself, you could see that there were two deleted scenes where it was once again this extended sequence of them eating soup. There was an extended sequence of them building a bed. Well, in the movie itself, there's an extended sequence of them washing their hands. It's really enjoyable. It's funny. And it's um, well animated, which the whole movie is. I still think this is the best animated movie um of all the Disney features, animation-wise. Because there's just so much effort, so much shadows, and so much detail going on. But that is, like... It is stuff like that where I'm like, we're, we're watching ten minutes of them washing their hands. <laughs> like, Why is Snow White animated the worst? Well, let's get into that. Why don't we talk about Why the next thing, it? which is the princess herself. Um, do you think this... Uh, let me ask. Do you think Snow White's the worst-looking princess? Worst looking. Worst looking. Do you think she's the absolute worst looking princess of the Disney films? She's not bad looking. (laughs) She's bad animated. Like I'd say of the worst looking. Her face is animated very round and like real. Mm -hmm. And now they're just getting more wide eyed. Yeah. More character in them anyway. Whereas Snow White kinda looks like even her mouth movements, it doesn't seem like they're trying to put too much movement into it. Because they don't want her to be more funny or um, or just kind of characterize her anyway. She's just kind of meant to be like, hello, I am happy and wonderful. and Which I guess is, I guess is a personality. 
Um, she's animated weird because they rotoscoped a lot of the animation from real humans. They would film human actors and then they would animate over it. It looks weird. Like, she doesn't have very much structure on her face. Mm -hmm. Just like they slapped on some eyes and a mouth. You almost wonder if they were, like, too afraid to put more detail into her face just because they didn't want to affect the absolute beauty of her, you know? Because she's meant to be this absolutely beautiful person, the fairest of them all. And if you put any kind of, like, cheekbone structure in there or any kind of... Fairest? I thought that meant, like, fair skin, not... Fair skinned? Yeah. Well, I just thought fairest meant, like, beautiful altogether. You know what I mean? Well... I don't know. One of us is wrong. <laughs> well, I always thought... Well, why don't you go dig up Walt's Snow grave and ask? Snow White, because her skin is Snow White. Yeah, I, yeah, but I'm... So fair. Is her name actually Snow White? Yeah. Well, I guess. Okay. Well, <laughs> I feel like the name itself kind of already predicted that. <laughs> um, well, okay. Do, do, you like, do you like Snow White as a character? Do you like her? Mm, she, she's kind of obnoxious. <laughs> her, her voice is so high pitched it drives me kind of crazy it is a very 1930s thing yeah like if you see movies from that time and singing of that time Betty Boop Yeah, I love her though yeah but it kind of is like that not animated the same way because the animation on her face would be a little better then I do get what you mean about that like it is weird and I think it's just I think they were trying to differentiate it so much from the funnier characters that they had done like the, you know, the, th the seven dwarves. And, uh, which they did that in a lot of the silly symphonies. They would have characters, wider eyed, be the funnier characters. They probably didn't want to do that to Snow White because she's meant to be, to look different. She's meant to look more beautiful, I guess. But in a way that has aged a lot too. Especially like the hairdo. Yeah. That hairdo isn't really something you would see today. Nope. But it was very prominent, I guess, in the exact year of 1937. <laughs> I don't know. I really like Snow White, the character. I you think, do? yeah. I th I think. I mean, she doesn't really have like a personality, but I kind of like that. She kind of. I don't know. She's. You like that she doesn't have a personality. Yeah, that's why I dig her. I just oh. like the women with. Them. No, but I like that she kind of messes with some of the characters, especially Grumpy. She just kind of like messes with him, and she knows how to like. Um, pull at his strings, but she knows it's all in good fun and that he's not going to get absolutely ticked, I guess. So I kind of like that. She's got personality there. Otherwise, I don't know. She's not... It, it also, it doesn't really feel like she's in the movie too much. So mm, She's sleeping. Half yeah, of well, that's true. I mean... Not half, but... There's a big chunk of it where she is sleeping and the dwarves are, like, planning on going upstairs. Yeah. But other than that, it is very much a 1930s almost stereotype, I guess, of what women were. They've translated it well to other movies because she was in Wreck-It Ralph 2, and she didn't, like, stick out like a sore thumb like I expected her to when they said all the princesses were going to be in the movie. Yeah. She actually kind of looked like she fit in with them, but they did give her the really big Disney eyes there. I mean, even that's been updated, but they kept the hairdo. You were kind of criticizing the dress during the movie. Yeah, well, it doesn't really match. Just red... Blue, yellow. What's wrong with that? Just threw in all the colors that they could. American flag. Yellow? Well, nah, it's pretty white. It's, her skin's white. Okay. Maybe that's what she was going for. Very American movie. Mm -hmm. I said that was really weird when she was suddenly praying. Like, I, I didn't like call it out, but you were just like, why'd you say it that way? There hasn't really been anything like that in any of the other Disney movies. There ha it, It's just weird because it's meant to be a fairy tale, and I always think that's not of this world. So to see something like that, suddenly I was like... I felt like Walt was appealing to the audience there. Look at even our Disney characters. Pray to God. Look at that. The prince gets about how many lines in the movie? Quite a few, actually. Wait, really? You yeah, think so? Yeah. What? What? Compared to other princes? <laughs> compared to Sleeping Beauty and... Cinderella probably has about the same, too. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's got his, like, family, though. I thought he was with them for some of it. There's no family members, like, in this movie at all. In fact, her kingdom seems kind of empty for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the prince shows up kind of... He's out of nowhere. He's got a real cool-looking feather hat on. And uh, <laughs> he shows up and starts singing. And um, 
he doesn't look like the most masculine dude on the planet. Nope. And, uh, but he's, you know, he sings and he says a couple lines and there's just, oh, there's nothing to and this dude. And then away. Isn't it weird? He, sho- he shows up at the beginning and he shows up at the end. And that's it. How it all is it? Well, not really. I mean, kind of, but even like in Sleeping Beauty, he goes and fights the dragon before getting to Sleeping Beauty. But he, that's at the end. Yeah, but what I'm saying is he's still in the movie kind of prominently. That's a prominent scene in the movie. But he doesn't talk. That's a good point. But in this movie, um, he just shows up at the end, and it's like they have a little thing on the screen that says, Oh, and he searched far and wide in the kingdom to find her and heard about her in the glass case. Okay, first of all, Kingdom seems pretty small. Surprised that it took not only going through fall and winter and spring to find her, but also, I just I'm amazed that he couldn't just you know ask someone. It does say oh, that he. Well, the, yeah, it's a good point. The deer and the rabbit. Well, the deer were pretty good at telling the dwarves where she was. So I mean, where's your excuse there? I don't have one. I guess I didn't ever meet the prince, so maybe that was why. Exactly. <laughs> um, but. I don't know. It's like, I just I just feel like the kingdom's not that big. But we're talking about weird logistical things now. I just think that prince is kind of lame. I feel like he could have done a lot more. And like then you said, he just kind of goes up to that rotting corpse and goes in for a kiss. Oh my gosh. I said if it was realistic, she <laughs> would be. But she's just all perfect and alive looking. Well, she, was not, she never really died. It was supposed it to be like a sleeping... It. She died, and the dwarves were too sad to bury her, and she looked beautiful, so they just kept their, kept her there to look at her. Well, imagine if you're just walking through the woods one day and you found something like that. And kissed her. Well, maybe this will help. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I should do this right now. <laughs> I'm feeling it. You know, I do... It makes me kind of wonder, because the way he goes in, he was like almost no hesitation. I kind of like write this thing in the back of my head, and like, maybe he spent those months like... Because, you know, the castle would have been empty. It was already pretty empty, but all you got left there is maybe the huntsman. The queen. Never mind. But the queen died. Never mind. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. So you got what? Maybe the huntsman still lives there if the queen didn't murder him off screen. Maybe he was the skeleton that she pushed that water away from. And then we have, I don't know, the crow. So I guess the crow is now the king of the castle. And um, that's all that pretty much the lives mirror. there. Hmm? The mirror. Oh, yeah, the mirror, who's just like... I have no one to talk to anymore. <laughs> no, he's the king. Uh, he went and danced with the three little pigs in Shrek. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. If he went into the castle, under the caverns, maybe read the book and found out, oh, f- first love's kiss. Which is weird. It's not true love's kiss. It's it's true love's, like, first kiss. Which. Well, what? Don't, that's what's written in the book. It's it's true love's first kiss. It's not It's not just true love's kiss. It's like. Love's first kiss. Yeah, it's which, the first person she fell in love with. So I mean, I feel like that's a bit of a big asterisk to put on. Like the, by the way, it needs to be like the first kiss, or it needs to be from the first person you love. Not a lot of detail there. You know, it's well, a very, it it's a very broad statement. I mean, it worked, but it's a, it's a very broad. Like I mean, that could, that could be the first person Dopey loved. Like maybe he could have kissed her. Maybe that could have fixed it. Grumpy should have tried. Oh, uh, maybe there was some. There was a connection between those two. I think. Mm-hmm. She, I think she had it for Grumpy. <laughs> um, uh, the dwarves kind of steal the movie. Like I get why the title is Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, even though that is a mouthful to say. It is their movie. They were the best part. They get a majority of the scenes. They have the kind of silly symphony short segments. They have the most lines, the most character, obviously, given that they are named after personalities. (laughs) Um, Sneezing is not a personality. Well, I mean, someone doesn't enough. Doc is not a personality. Which is weird, because then he's just kind of... Cannot spit out a sentence at all. Right. So you almost want to... Maybe his name shouldn't have been Doc then. What would you have called him? I don't know. I'm not the writer. I really I really dig Grumpy. Not enough that... Is he your favorite? Yeah. Not enough that I'd put him on a t-shirt like a lot of people do, but... He's your favorite, actually. He's my favorite. I think he's the best. He's the funniest. Hmm. He gets the best line in the movie. Everybody's favorite is Dopey. Yeah, but I think that's like a... I think that's a kid thing you know people like him as a kid and then he's prob- my favorite well you probably related to him when you were a kid because he's got a my kid-like personality 
You relate to bashful? Yeah. Hmm. You a bashful person? Do you get real bit. nervous? When I asked you the other day, what's your favorite villain? Forgot about her. Forgot about her Cinderella entirely. one, too. Yeah. What's her name? Um, I don't know. Bad up. Bad up. Madam. Lady something. Lady Tremaine? Yep. There you go. So, um, I really like the villain because it's absolutely creepy, but you just gotta wonder which one is scarier, the witch or when she's the queen. I think the queen still looks real creepy. I don't know how she... I think she looks... You look... She, wait, you think she looks real fine? Yeah. Real well put together? She you really? impressive. You think do so? You, do you see her eyeshadow? It's like up to her eyebrows. I don't know. I think... I feel like she's got like an Angelica Houston thing going on, which... Not to I don't know. rain on anyone's Angelica Houston parade. She's the one that's in Adam's family. I think she's oh. the one you don't like. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for ruining it. <laughs> that's what I think of. Except with one of those like weird things that go around her face. Because it doesn't seem like she has hair. It seems like she's wearing like a like a scuba suit like headgear mm-hmm. thing. And then she's got a crown. Yeah. And I don't know. She is. Her cr- hair pops out when she's changing into an old lady. Somehow, yeah, that's true. The thing oh, is I didn't still even think on. of that. And then, well, it's all white hair, but it's funny too because then when she's the witch, you don't really see her hair. So, yeah, you do. well, kind of, but like mostly she's just wearing that hood. So, like, what was even why did, why did all her hair got to grow out? <laughs> she's gonna wear a hood anyway. So, <laughs> I was mentioning that when she's the witch and she's just kind of a black mass walking around, she kind of looks really weird. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was like, outside of being inside of a house or a medium shot or being next to another character, when she's just running around the forest, she looks really weird. because <laughs> her back. But she is, like, terrifying. Yeah. Especially, like, since, I don't know, I, we talked about that Haunted Mansion, like, sing-along Stop, tape. I do not like that. That was creepy, though, when she's in that, like, the costumed character they have at Disneyland. Not a fan of that. I think it's in Fantasmic as well, and it's very... It's, it's more disturbing than, like, any other Disney villain, I think. Because the other Disney villains, they either have, like, a goofy side or a serious side. Mm-hmm. Who do you think's the scariest villain? Scariest villain. Scariest? Hades freaked me out. Hades? But also, yeah. He, but he's more funny. Yeah, but, like, I don't know, that scene where they're just, like, all floating in that pool... Oh, that's true. ...freaked me out. That's not really him, I guess. Yeah. But, and Princess and the Frog one. He he's a little creepy. Even he, I think, is animated to be more funny, but he actually that part is creepy. Didn't you say um Lifsent when she's a dragon is scary too? I well not necessarily. Like, I think that part was more, like, cool than scary. I think Maleficent's scarier just as herself rather than the dragon. I She's think. Great. There's a scene in the movie where she actually mentions, oh, oh, she'll kill me. Who? And she's like, my stepmother. And she actually says it. Mm-hmm. And I never noticed that before. I was like, wow. So they actually, there's a clear indication there that she knows her stepmom is actually trying to kill her right now. Yeah. Um, Wait, she says stepmom or queen? No, not just, yeah, she said well, stepmother. Well, she does say yeah. queen too, though. Yeah. Well, that's what I always thought, too. I was like, she says queen. I never well, thought they... kind ma- of piece it together because she's a queen and she's a princess. Well, right. But, you know, I, I forgot completely that she even ever mentioned that she knows she's being chased after. I always thought the woodsman just told her to run away. In the movie, I kind of started paying more attention. I was like, not only did he kind of explain why, but also she straight up says stepmom during that scene when she's on the bed and talking to the dwarves. I always thought in when I had re- originally seen it, I always just thought, well, everyone knows her stepdaughter, but I feel like for the most part they just say, oh, she's the queen and she's the princess, or even Snow White lives there. <laughs> like... <laughs> And she's dressed in rags, and I guess she's cleaning up the place, because I guess it's meant to be like Cinderella, but... No, Cinderella is like Snow White. Okay, well, my bad. I forgot. They're all taking it from Snow White. Snow White made every movie before all the other movies. Basically. Yeah, well, there's no reason to see him frozen, too, then. Villain is creepy. I don't like her. She freaks me out. She's got a creepy look when she's the queen, and she's got a creepier look as the witch, and that kind of stuff gave me nightmares. That cackling laugh. Did that- you actually have nightmares? Well, probably. <laughs> Not ones I can remember. I had nightmares of every single movie, Toy Story included, but never on this, which <laughs> is weird. 
This one you were like, but yeah, that's just because you were into the queen. You're like, like she's this, fine. This is fine. This is a good movie. <laughs> I'll tough it out. Um, all right. Well, the music then, which I love it. You, I, it's just in the background of everything. I like how they have music for the dwarves when they move. It's cute. Mm-hmm. I do kind of forget about how much I enjoy it because I always just tie it to the songs. But like the score itself is really good. My favorite song in the movie is. Uh, you know, the Someday My Prince Will Come song. Basic. Sorry. <laughs> I think it's very pretty. Had it not been for Wish Upon a Star, I think that song would define the company. But fair enough. <laughs> Fairest of them all. Yep. What's your favorite song? I already told you. The one that they were singing. Uh, not even really singing, but it was the yodeling song. <laughs> yeah. That's not a song, but... Well, I mean, but it's it's, it's a whole scene. S- where he's playing the piano and he, they're yodeling and they yep. have the drum set. That would be my mom when we would watch it multiple times. She'd be like, "Okay, after this scene, we're gonna go to bed." So I just ended on a high note. Before the queen attacks, see that's why you never had nightmares then. Well, now I'm piecing it all together. <laughs> probably watch I'll- that part during the day. I like when Dopey just gets a drum solo. That's real nice. I appreciate a drum solo in a movie. <laughs> okay. Um, hi, hi Ho, which um, Lion King stole the walking across the tree trunk scene from. See? Everything's taken. Everything is taken from this movie. Um, which I do like Hi Ho, but it became one of those things that I feel like... I feel like that was like a thing people would do in elementary when you'd be walking in the line. You always got that one kid who's like, Hi Ho, Hi Ho, because, you know, we're walking in the line. Never experienced that. Well, I guess you're just too young. Okay. Well, sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I no, felt like... I just had normal people. Maybe I was that idiot. You don't know. Probably. I probably did do that. But I felt like I got annoyed with that song because it became so cliched with, like, everything. I feel like that's a song that's often quoted in most parodies. The the, the Someday My Prince Will Come song is a very tender moment that I, I think still works really well, even with her... 1930s very high pitched sound. <laughs> well, it's like a it's like a lead up song. It, it it's part of someday my prince will come. It's like they, the wishing they, well they, song. They, yeah, I know the wishing well song. And I, I said I don't remember his end song. That's why I'm saying la da 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 because it's a very memorable song. I I just can't understand his voice. Maybe is what it is. You know, it's just lost to time, the lyrics, really. I could turn on subtitles, but I'm not a buffoon. <laughs> so, <laughs> really, though, that is that is Snow White and the Seven Dwarves for you. It's a very... For a runtime, I think it's like 75 minutes. Gets the job done, tells the story. Any kind of other final thoughts, any things you want to mention? What do you think of her dress? <laughs> You're still on that? Are you into it? No. No, no, I'm not. It's very no. It's I mean. You don't like the poofy sleeves. It's of the time, like you said. I mean. I it's, didn't ask if it was of the time. I said you like. It. No. Okay. I don't. It's just. I didn't like it when I had to wear it either. Well, I never had to wear it. <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> I I appreciate other Disney princess dresses, but S- Snow White I think still really holds up. But I can understand why people today probably wouldn't attached to it as much one of the reasons being that it just has so much of what's in other disney movies so it's kind of like a what is the point why would we go back to this one when this version is a very basic version of that but to me like i like kind of how simple it is the simplicity of the story and of the relationship because you know at the end of the day i don't really need a whole explanation for why they love each other and i don't need all these extra tidbits to it and because, yeah, I, any day I can go to any of the other Disney movies. This one, to me, still works just because it's so simple. It goes by quick. And animation-wise, I think it's still some of their best. They put so much effort into this because they were really trying to prove their worth. They're like, we're going to make this project worth it. This should have, like, ended here. Like, I mean, the movie could have just crashed and burned and Disney would have been done. And we wouldn't have so much today. This movie was, like, a huge success, and I can see why. Of course, I think if it came out today, it wouldn't work as well. I feel like you'd maybe have to add some extra elements. I don't think it would be as popular, but I, Obviously, I think it would still yeah. be good. Do you think there's a live-action remake of this on the horizon? I hope not. They should stop. <laughs> 
It's weird though to me. I still think it's weird that you know, like I said earlier, it's it's this one's just kind of gone untouched for everything, for live action remakes too, but for direct to video sequels, anything Why? in video games, anything in like. Well, I think one of them, one of the things is I think there is maybe a part of the studio that's feels kind of weird about touching it because it is so much like it is Walt's movie. It is mm-hmm. his. They made a sequel to Mary Poppins, and that was that is Walt's movie, hundred percent. Was Sleeping Beauty? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, he was. Really I mean, done but yeah, that's Maleficent, another one. That is weird too. Yeah, they haven't really done much with Sleeping Beauty. I mean, yeah, besides Maleficent, but even in like the theme parks, they have more like Sleeping Beauty stuff. The castle from Disneyland is Sleeping Beauty's mm-hmm. castle. There, I mean, and there is a Snow White ride. But even though all these movies that came out after, like Pinocchio, Fantasia, so many of these movies were made by, well, you know, Walt Disney producing, and he was alive when they were made, the only movie premieres, which I I, I've heard this, so maybe this isn't even true, but I feel like it is, he went to two movie premieres for his company in his entire lifetime. He went to the Snow White premiere, and he went to the Mary Poppins premiere. I feel like that says a lot about which movies he appreciated the most. Yeah. I feel like he, if this quote exists, it might not, but I feel like he said at one point, or at least felt that he had never really topped Snow White. That Snow White, and I mean, financially, he never really did. It's still one of the highest grossing movies ever adjusted for inflation. They definitely had successes later. I don't know. It's it's such a like important film to the company. Maybe that's why they don't touch it much. It's too good. They just want to leave it at that. Which is weird for a company that just thrives off sequels now. But anyway, that's pretty much Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Pretty much. Thanks for listening. And uh, next time, we're going to be doing uh, Frozen 2. You're probably wondering, why are we doing that before Frozen? Well, we thought it'd be fun to do the very first Disney Animation Studios film, and then we're going to do the very latest, brand new Disney Studios film, and then after Frozen 2, we're just going to randomize it. We're going to have it set up where we pick a random movie in the future. I originally wanted to go in order, but I was like, it'd be more fun if we, you know, mix it up. So after Frozen 2, who knows? It might be, we might be doing some classic like, you know, maybe Sleeping Beauty or Cinderella. Or we might be doing something like The Black Cauldron. Huh? Something more obscure like Make Mine Music. Maybe Home on the Range. Huh? Could have some fun there. You know, that's what's going to happen too. It's going to be all the movies you want to watch, right? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, we'll see you next time with Frozen 2. I'm very excited to see it. Um, Even though... It's just going to steal everything from the one that started them all. So, anyway, uh, this has been Justin, and this has been Stella on the Discussion Podcast. And we'll see you next time when you wish upon a star. This summer, come celebrate the wonder, the romance, and the magic of Walt Disney's all-time classic. We will live happily ever after. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Still the fairest of them all.